So we here at the SID Display Week, and uh, who are you? I'm uh, very active in the displays industry. I've been uh, from the almost very beginning, past president, uh, very functionally uh, engineering, 40 patents, formed a couple of companies. My last company was Tannis Electron Displays Inc. for resizing liquid crystal displays. I literally cut a display and resealed it and it preserved all of its original functions. I first did that in 1999 and have uh, so, over 40 patents now. I stand right over here. So, um, uh, so you say you can take a, an LCD display and resize it? Yes, I can, and no one thought it could be done. So uh, how does that work? Because well, uh, is it just a bunch of liquid and you just... Uh... The liquid is so thin that it doesn't move. So it's five microns thick, and when you cut it, it just stays there and... Uh, it doesn't care where it is, right? It doesn't care where... Well, it does care. It stays right where it is, and all of the functionality is preserved. So, But uh, an LCD has so many layers, right? It and does. And some of the layers you can't resize, or you can resize all of them? No, it's... It, the, the LCD material is a sandwich in all the circuitry between two pieces of glass. So you cut both pieces of glass, break it, reseal it by a technique that was uh, you press, put on the sealant, and then release, and used in avionics. And uh, so it's been used now for 18 years. And uh, avion avionics was the first use, and then now there's a bigger use for custom sizes for signage as well as avionics. So why is it a bigger deal in avionics? Well, it fits a unique point. The manufacturers of liquid crystal displays have multi-million dollar factories and they have to make displays by the 150,000 a month is an order. And my customers only wanted 10 or 20. So resizing a, an existing high performance display was a real solution. High performance Fast. display? All of them, uh, the liquid crystal now today has to be considered the highest function display in terms of resolution and performance and life. Very, very functional kind of way to present an image. But when you resize an image, uh, an LCD, you, you lose resolution or? No. Uh, indirectly, you lose the number of lines, but you don't change any of the original parameters. So after resizing it, the display is smaller, there's fewer pixels, but the performance is the same as the original warranty performance. And so, uh, how about all these other uh, inventions you've had, uh, you've done? What, what kind of things have you worked on? Uh, other things include uh, matrix addressing of a display. I have a very early patent on how to matrix address a display called the One Third Select. Uh, I taught classes for 20 years at UCLA, extension on displays. I started in 1980, so I've been fundamentally very active in the industry for so, all my life. So how do you take an idea or an invention and make it into mass production? What's the challenge? Or what's the, the adventure of uh, this industry? Well, it depends. Uh, in the case of liquid crystal resizing, the volume was always low, so it was kind of a handheld process. It didn't justify, the volume was so low, it didn't justify automated machinery, but it had the flexibility of doing one size one day and another size the next day. So now they're ending up being used in buses and train stations where special sizes are needed for over doors and in unique places where a normal standard size won't fit. And, and there's, there's also going to be a, a booth uh, here, a Pixel Scientific booth, right? So what is a Pixel uh, I, Scientific? I sold the company two years ago to Dick McCartney and he moved it to Scotts Valley and changed the name to Pixel Scientific and is doing very well, resizing custom-sized liquid crystal displays, a very unique but highly sought-after capability in making custom sizes. Any size people want, any shape or no? Uh, shape had to be... Uh, could not do a negative cut, so to speak. It had to be round or rectangular or octagonal. You could cut corners off, but you couldn't make you couldn't go wedges inside into the... it. You couldn't go inside. Because yeah. the, the, one of the layers of the LCD needs to address every corner of the display? You had to save two sides 
where the X and Y addressing electronics are mounted. But you could cut away those two sides and cut off the corner. So, uh, are there uh, many uh, great friends around here at the SID um, uh, conference? Are there many interesting things happening in the display world, right? Oh, yes. Uh, so, the new big venture is in OLEDs. So, the OLED display has higher performance than the famous liquid crystal, but it costs more money and has a shorter life. So, the higher performance costs more money, shorter life versus the liquid crystal, which has been uh, fundamental breakthrough going back to 1980 and it has changed the face of the earth in electronic displays. The liquid crystals have replaced a hundred year old cathode ray tube and are now used in all kinds of portable devices. But the OLED, which is uh, more complicated but higher performing light emitting technology, is used in unique things like cell phones for virtual reality displays and higher resolution, wider color gamut applications. Do you have an OLED TV? I have a liquid crystal television. And uh, I probably wouldn't buy an OLED, even though it's better performer, it's more money and a shorter light. So the economics of that maybe are such that the liquid crystal still wins. It's it will be interesting to see what happens in the coming year, right? Maybe oh, the OLED TVs are going to go down in price, hopefully. <coughs> yes, uh, it really is going to be interesting. The Chinese are going into OLEDs in a big way, and they may bring down the manufacturing cost and change planet Earth in terms of the fundamental display. Because right now, most uh, all of them are coming from LG only, right? LCD is the leading technology, but OLEDs are the technology that still has this promise, a little better performance, but a higher price, so you take your choice right now.